Route maps for NAT? Really? Well, even if it feels kind of a routing topic, you will be amazed to know that NAT leverages route maps in many scenarios. Now, route maps have many use cases, such as specific route advertisements in IGPs or interior gateway protocols, matching conditions in BGP, redistribution between routing protocols, policy-based routing, which we will look in our lab, network address translation, and more. Route maps are used in terms of the if argument in network address translation on a Cisco router. You have seen access lists being called in NAT overload statements in the NAT beginner series. That ACL is kind of like the if statement for NAT, but there are limitations in it because you can only match based on IP addresses and not things like physical outgoing interfaces. Now to kind of make a sense of it, let's first go to our lab and try to understand what route maps are and how they function and how can they relate with NAT so that we're all on the same page before we dive in to our other labs which utilize route maps. So let's dive in. Now just to give you an overview of the lab topology we have in this route maps lab, it's pretty simple. We only have four routers and uh, they are connected as you can see. Uh, router 1 is connected to router 2 and router 2 has connections to router 3 and router 4. And router 1, two, uh, one 3 and 4 have loopback addresses configured on them. So interface loopback has been configured for the slash 32 um, bit subnet mass. That basically means the host IP address. So we're going to be doing some testing, some ping tests. Um, that are going to be originating from loopback address supposedly of router 1 and that will that that IP packet will be going towards the loopback address of router 3 and similar will, will be the case with the router 4 so that's the basic lab topology that we have at our disposal in this specific lab now let's head over to our lab info and lab steps I think I've already given you the lab info that you need. Um, so they all have full NLRI. And I don't think I basically uh, told you that OSPF is running uh, with all of these routers. So um, this subnet obviously needs to be advertised to our R3 uh, over here. So, so I basically um, ran OSPF on all of these routers so they have network, la network layer reachability. So the first step that we're going to be going through is a ping test. Do a ping test from 101101, which is here, to 3.3.3.3 and 4.4.4.4 for test reachability. So let's head on to router 1. And as you can see, we have OSPF going loading to full here. So we have OSPF connectivity. So just to show you that show IP interface brief, exclude a sign. I have two IP address, one is, one is the loopback address of 101111, that's 32 bit subnet mass, and this is the IP address as you can see on this gig 0 slash 0 interface connected to R2. So, uh, and if you want to see the OSPF configuration, it's pretty simple, nothing um, you know, like uh, fun or happening here. So, we only have OSPF running on all our interfaces and this is not a very good way um, to run OSPF by the way because any interface you bring up right now if I go ahead and create an, another loopback with another IP it, it will start being advertised in OSPF so that's a pro tip for you so um, so what do we do now okay we do a test ping from 1.1.1 to 3.3.3 and 4.4.4 so Let's do a ping to 3.3.3.3. Now, if I hit enter here, it's going to take the source IP address of this, this gig 0 slash 0 because that's the default. So what, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the source keyword. And what we can do is we can say source uh, loopback 0, oh, sorry, interface loopback, no. Oh. There is no loopback 0? Oh, there is. Okay. Loopback 0, you could do that and the source IP address will be changed to that of the loopback zero. If no, so you could go ahead and type in that IP address, 101101. So as you can see, we can reach that. You can also do a trace route um, through 3.3.3.3. Uh, source, uh, I hope so, there is a source. All right, there is. 
101101, uh, and I'm just going to do numeric so that it doesn't take time in uh, the, uh, the DNS lookups, uh, which is a pain, by the way, sometimes. So um, there it is. So as you can see, it's going to 10.1.12.2, uh, which is this router, and then it heads on towards 10.1.23.1, which is this router over here. And similar will be the case for 4.4.4.4. No problems there. Let's do. Let's just do a trace route uh, without doing the pings. So as you can see, trace route is happening. So obviously, ping will work as well. So that is all hunky dory. So that's it for the first step. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, moving on to step two, we have to create a route map on router two, which is RTR two, and match the following. So match source IP of 1.1.1.1 going towards the destination IP of 3.3.3.3 and also match outgoing interface. Now, why is this important? Well, uh, that is because in that you have to match based on IP addresses. That's what you're going to be seeing in both conditional and that uh, dual homed NAT. And the other thing that is very important is matching the interface specifically the outgoing interface now uh that will all be cleared once we create this statement first of all and then apply it there is no apply uh actually there should have been a last uh bullet saying that apply this i'll just add that uh but let's go and create a route map uh first of all and see what happens there as you can see, I have three neighborships coming up. Going into enable configuration mode and doing a route map. And if you click question mark here, you have to specify a name right here. So I'll just say DN route map. Okay, I'll just hit enter. Now I'm not going into the details of route maps. Uh, I really want you to know that we are just focused on NAT. But to really make you understand, I'm going to be using a set statement as well. So route map, as discussed earlier, uh, works on match and set statements. So you have to match some statements. Uh, like uh, if I do a show route map right now, I see one route map has been created and I created that route map. So you have two clauses okay so you got two containers first of all you match some stuff you match on ip addresses you match on interfaces and you match on many many other things once those mass statements are matched quote unquote matched means they're satisfied they're true then the set clause comes into play so you set some parameters then, uh, like you set the next hop, you can do that and you can set some parameters of BGP. You can do a lot of stuff, which I actually don't want to go deeper into because, because NAT doesn't use the set clause. Now this is a quote unquote, so remember this, NAT doesn't use the set clause. NAT only uses route maps for matching, okay? so. Let's go to our step and try to match on these guys. Match and source IP 101.1.1 and going toward 3.3.3.3. Now there is no actual um, command to actually match uh, IP addresses directly in a route map. You have to create an access list. So you have to create an access list, supposedly I'll say access list extended. We have to use extended because we have to match based on a source IP plus a destination IP. So I'll say IP access list extended. I'll say DN list or ACL, DN ACL. Now anything that is permitted here is actually matched in the route map. So I'll do permit, just like in the NAT statements, remember? Permit IP host, I could use host the host keyword if I wanna match on a single IP, or I could use uh, the wildcard mass of all zeros. This and this one, are exactly the same the result is the same for both of them so doing that we have an implicit deny at the end so don't really need to um, type in that command okay so we've done this now we need to match this 
access list in the roadmap we just created. So roadmap, uh, what was the name of the roadmap? Just forget it, DN roadmap. So there it is. So hitting enter, you match. This is the keyword. If I hit question mark here, you mainly have two things, match and set. These are the, the match and set clauses as you can see over here in the show command. So let's do a match, first of all. And the command will blow your mind a little bit because it's a little bit different. You don't actually call ACLs directly like match ACL. You have to specify IP, address, and then if you had a question mark, it will say, okay, which access list do you want to refer as? Obviously, access lists contain IP addresses. That's why it's referring to this IP address term. Maybe that's why. I'm not really sure. But that's the way how it works. So um, a match IP address, DN ACL. So the first clause is done. So do a show route map. Route map. Oh, sorry map there it is so do a short uh, route man you see the match clause has been populated by an ip address access list that is named dnacl and that dnacl is this acl that we just created that is matching the source ip of 1.1.1.1 and the destination ip 3.3.3.3 so that's the first mass statement now the Mass statements in the route map can be an OR statement or can be an AND statement. So let me tell you what I mean by that. So if I were to hit this command again, okay, match IP address, address uh, DNACL. If I hit space right now and question mark, you can see I have the option to input another ACL. So I, if I input ACLs this way, like this, ACL2, DN underscore ACL3. So these are basically, oh, sorry, <laughs> this is not what I wanted. Oops, uh, one second, there it is, no. Oh God, okay. So the, these are basically OR statements. So if the IP address is in the ACL, DN ACL match, or the IP addresses, whatever they might be, they aren't actually created, obviously. So if you have some different set of IP addresses that are in ACL2, if they match, or if this uh, ACL, which, was, which I was trying to create, and that was supposed to be three. So if that is the case, uh, that is an OR statement. So how is an AND statement done? So as we have match statement of DNACL, another match statement, if I input it, which I will for uh, this IP address. Now I know that loopback 101.101.1 is gonna be uh, going towards 3.3.3.3 and the interface is gonna be gig zero slash one because that is the outgoing interface. Now, how do I know that? Uh, that is because of the routing table I have show IP route, if I do a show IP route, uh, 3, 3, 3, I can see the outgoing interface is gig 0 slash 1. So I know, okay, I can match based on that as well. So I do a match statement. Okay, the first match statement was this, okay. The next is, now this is an AND statement because I've hit enter. Now I'm going into match interface uh, gig 0 slash 1. So if I do a sure route map now, you can see I have these clauses like saying that um, um, match, and this is an N, an IP address, if I had those ACLs in it, so they would be like, well, this is, let me just show you that real quick. Uh, where did the ACLs go? There they are, uh, three. If I hit do show a route map now, do you show route map you can see now look at this this is an or statement over here if i have an ip address as a match statement and then i have an interface i could have multiple things matching if they are all true if they're all true then and only then the set clause with will kick in okay so that is the basic concept of a route map 
Now the set clause that I'm about to show you doesn't really concern you in the NAT statements because NAT doesn't use the set clause. Set clause or the result clause or the action clause is basically from the NAT process itself. Okay, so if, uh, f first of all, I need to get rid of this. Uh, let me see if it doesn't overwrite or not. Show route map. I know it didn't override, so I'll have to do a no here. No to that. And then that. New show route map. And there it is, beautiful. So we only have an access list and an interface matching. Now, this interface, some some of you may get confused that, okay, is this the incoming interface or the outgoing interface? Now, the thing with route map is it, it is applied on an interface. Means I will apply the route map inwards and it is always inwards, sorry. You don't have a direction to specify like an ACL. It always matches inwards. So I'm gonna put this route map on this interface of gig zero slash zero. And so it doesn't really make sense to match that interface, right? So whenever I'm, I'm matching interfaces, they're always gonna be understandably uh, outgoing interfaces. So this is the outgoing interface that I'm matching. Again, it doesn't need to be there for this this uh, a scenario that we are making. Uh, it doesn't need to be there, but um, you can put it there, okay? So uh, I'm just showing you this because this will be uh, really useful in, in, in the dual homed NAT uh, scenario that we're gonna be doing soon. Uh, okay, so let's put the set command here no i want to drop those packets going from this ip address that we have ping one uh what was it three dot three dot three, three source uh, 101 things are happening everything is going fine and similar was the case with 4.2 4.4 4. 4. 4 was happening so i will go ahead and i'll say set interface to null zero now there may be other ways to drop the packet, but this is just one way. Again, it doesn't really concern us in this series because it's not a route map series or not a routing series because it's used very intensely in routing. Um, but to really give you the feel of the route map, I just want to um, let you know how it's done. Now, another thing, when you're using NAT with route maps, you don't really need to apply it in any interface. Okay, so in this lab, I'll do that. Um, for the time being, okay, if you were to go to router one and try to ping, it's pinging, okay, because I haven't applied it yet. But in NAT, you basically apply it in the NAT statement. Let me just show you that. Um, if you have a route map configured uh, inside source, I think, yeah, there is a source of route map. So you specify the route map name inside the NAT statement. And the only clauses that are being used with NAT um, in terms of route map are the match clauses, okay? Uh, so for this lab, let's do it. I mean, like, we'll just apply it on this interface, gig zero size zero, which is this interface over here, and try to drop the packet. Uh, IP, the command is IP policy, route map, um, what was the name? Uh, route map is DN route map. There it is. Now let's do a ping. Oops, uh, so it should, sorry, this is 4.4.4. You see that? Unreachables are coming. That is because that R2 is filtering the packets now. If, if I were to go to show a route map now sorry you can see five packets came in and five were mashed and dropped if i were to uh, do a repeat count of only one packet more and this count really goes to six no this isn't really needed for you okay i'm just doing this for fun i i actually made this lab so i was like okay so why not let's just show the guys how it's done so this is how, how basically route maps function. So they have this mass statement. Again, only the mass statements are needed for NAT statements. So we will be going through the labs of conditional NAT and uh, dual homed NAT and see how the route map kicks in. 
So I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.